Hi, this is Pastor Ken from Vineyard of Hope in Oshawatomie, Kansas. My prayer for you today is that God would touch your heart in a real and tangible way for a breakthrough in your life as you hear this message. Thank you for watching, and I want to give you a personal invitation to come and see what we're all about. The church information is at the end of this video. Now I hope you enjoy this message. God bless. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this moment, this, this moment right here where you are in the house where we know that the presence of the living God is here because you are here. The omnipresent all time, on time God. So we come to you and we say, we say together, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thine kingdom come, and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And <laughs> Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. And all God's children said, would you just tell him you love him and give him, just do something to show that you love him today. God, we love you and we worship you today and we thank you that it is well with our soul. Isn't God good? Who would agree that we have a beautiful God and that he loves us and he's in the house today? I want to I wanna say I'm excited about the group. Um, you guys, as, as a worship team, uh, those songs they practiced this morning to do today, they didn't have no time to work on it. And that says a lot to stirring up the gifts in the church. Amen? Um, would you give the team a hand? They don't do this for honor. But the reason we're doing this is they just, like I'm stretching you, Tyler is stretching some of the people. And Brittany goes back to school. Next week's her last Sunday. She goes back to school. And so Tyler had her lead today. And, and she threw a bunch of new songs at the team. And they just practiced this morning. And what you see are people who are anointed to do and willing to do with what they have something for God. So he puts his steel, his, his seal, his stamp on it. And, and you enter into the presence of God because people are willing to do it to worship him. And that's that. Now, we're not here to entertain anybody. We're here to help you get into the place where you are ready for word, for the living word of God, for something that will move you into your destiny, his will for your life above your own. Who knows that? The more we die, the more he lives. It's to die to self, it's to gain. I mean, he, I just want to see him glorified. And if I can die a little more today to who I am and, and what my will is, God's will begins to really shine. Amen? And so we are in a place where we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna finalize the last part of a series um, on spiritual warfare. Have, has anybody enjoyed the spiritual warfare series? Man, I've enjoyed it because it's life-changing for me. We have talked specifically about everything involving spiritual warfare, and not to the extent that we could. We could go even deeper. We could go all year on this one topic, but in a way that it would meet right now moments, right now where we are. Every one of us are under attack, whether it's in our mind, most of the time it is in our mind, whether it's our body, whether it's our health, whether it's uh, our finances. Every one of us have an attack going on, and there is a difference between being under an attack that is simply the action or reaction because of an action. Every action has a Reaction. So when you do something, you will expect that the fruit that you get from that action, well, it's going to be such as it'll be just. And so not everything is a spiritual attack, but there are spiritual attacks. We can't be looking for a demon under every door because we would be absolutely paranoid. There's not a demon under every doormat. But there is demonic activity. And in this series, what I've tried to do is awaken you to the fact that there is an attack going on, that it is angelic, it is demonic, angelic, waging war, fallen angels, waging war. With an enemy that was a created being that wants to ruin you. He stirred up a rebellion once and now he stirs up rebellions in mankind over and over and over again. And they fall away from what God's purpose and intention for their life was. And they end up in dismay and discomfort and, and chaos and death. He comes to steal, kill and destroy. And so we're going to touch on this. And I really want the spirit of God, Lord, loose my tongue and speak what you have for this people. That they would leave encouraged in Jesus' name. The Bible says in Ephesians 6, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against their powers, against rulers of the darkness in this world, and against spiritual. Everybody say spiritual. Spirit. Spiritual wickedness in high places. This is warfare. So what I'm going to do today as we conclude our series on spiritual warfare, I'm going to give you a brief summary of every one of the messages up till now, and then today's message to end it. Is that okay? 
Some of you haven't been here all this whole time and you may want to hear this. If you haven't gotten the content of this series, go to YouTube. Please eat the word of God. Chew on it. Last week we talked about something that was so, so, I mean, it's, it's what we deal with constantly. And, and if you miss it, I want you to get on YouTube. Pastor Brenda does a great job in making sure that it's available to you so that you cannot fall behind in the overall uh, synergy of the body. What we're doing together. Amen. And so here's a little brief uh, lowdown of what we've preached in this series. First thing I asked before we got into the series is I said this. I warned you never to be too busy for God's activity for your life. I told you the bottom line in this is that if we, simply, if we simply get too busy for what God has, we miss out. See, if the enemy doesn't get you to sin, he'll get you too busy. And eventually what follows that busyness when you put God on the back burner is sin. It's, it's just the natural byproduct of not being intimately connected with God. We fall into our humanity, fall into sin, fall, to, fall into deception, temptation, and accusation. We fall into the things that would ruin our lives. So I said, don't get too busy for God's activity for your life. I even warned you, I said, the enemy will come at you with everything he can to keep you from being in this house and hearing a message on spiritual warfare. And many people have won this battle and others, they have made, they've lost it. And so I just want to make it clear that that was the first one. And you don't have to be a loser in this. You don't have to let the enemy win in this. You can be a winner in this. Get on YouTube. There's still hope. There's always hope. Isn't God good? Yeah. Technology is not a bad thing, although I'm not technically savvy. I'm not intellectual when it comes to technology. I'm still <laughs> learning. I am, it, Pastor right. Brenda might get frustrated while teaching me. But I want you to know it's, it's available. And I said, don't get too busy for God's activity. Well, what is that? That's being in church. That's being the church. That's giving like God's intended you. That's feeding the hungry. That's doing the things that God has called us to be. Do not get so busy with life that you forget God's activity for your life. And that was week one. Because that is the beginning of a failing or losing a battle. If you're not going to be here, you will not grow. There are many people who say they have an intimate walk with God, but yet their Bible is as dusty as it gets because they never open it to see what he has to say back. It's a one-sided conversation. Everybody crying out to God, but never letting him talk back. Listen, he speaks through his word. And, and so I tell people, until you can get it, come and get it. Amen? Isn't God good? Be involved in God's activity because he can do it all. Uh, the second thing I shared with you is spiritual warfare comes in two ways. And I also shared with you how to put on the armor of God in the second part of the series. And uh, what it was, I shared that it's both offensive and defensive. And that we put on an armor and we never take it off. I also shared that the only way that the enemy can penetrate the armor of God that you put on is, is through the holes that are the size of the rebellion that you hold on to. That's the only vulnerable spot, although his mercy and grace covers many more. If we really all admitted it, none of us deserve to be here in Jesus' name. We, we, we do not deserve to be here. I, for one, should be dead. But God has called me, and he set me apart, and he set me free for a moment like this. So I put on the armor, and I don't go to sleep and take it off. My armor never comes off. That is the love and the grace and, and being covered from head to toe by the blood of the Lamb. And I share that so that you would understand when you're always armed up, the enemy can come, but you will have a defense that is strong and an offense that makes a difference against everything that tries to infiltrate this battlefield. Amen? Amen. And so I shared that with you on the second part. We interrupted that briefly because I needed you. The Holy Spirit said to remind you that you are enough. I'm doing a, just, a, just a summary of the last few weeks because I need you to know that it all went together because this was the purpose of God. This was all supposed to make sense for you and I in the season we live in. Don't get too busy. Understand it happens in two ways. Put on your armor, never take it off. And then I, I showed you through the word of God where the ingredients for a miracle in Osawatomi is right here. If you're willing to give it up, he's willing to do something with it. Amen. If you're willing to let go and not let fear stop you from a miracle, I shared with you that the only thing fear has a grip on is what you're afraid to let go of. I shared that if you would just let it go in his hands, he multiplies it for the purpose of furthering his message in your life, his will in your life. God, to do the supernatural, there is still a place and a time for healing, deliverance, and freedom. God still sets the captives free. He still takes people that are nothing and creates something. He likes drunks because he makes them into preachers. You are enough. And sound guy. You are enough. How many years? Three in like several months now, right? Right? Uh, uh, who are you? <laughs> Sean, how many years? Two, three. Three. 
This is what God's doing. But, but it's not just for everybody. I've seen many come in and many run out and they make us their problem when their problem is it came to a point where they didn't want to be completely surrendered to God's will and it hurt too much to let go of this hurt. It hurt too much to let go of this hang up. And so they ran back into their dismay and their dysfunction. There's nothing more heartbreaking for a pastor than to watch people who come in and find grace and God puts everything together and then they walk back out and fall apart. They can call us names, and they do, and I don't care about that. What hurts more is that they fall back out and fall apart. Oh, but God is still faithful. And what I was trying to make my point in this was, was if we are willing, what we have is enough to make a difference in the people in our circle's lives, our work environment, our families. If we start there, then it does echo through every area. There's a ripple effect, amen? Because in God's hand, what you do here has a ripple effect through all eternity. It just keeps going. I am not trying to gain efforts or reward or accolades of men in this season of my life. I could care less what people think about me because I have an audience of one. What matters is that eventually in eternity I'm storing up everything that he would have for me by being a faithful servant of God. I am enough. Amen. You are enough. Amen? And that was the goal of that message. And it wasn't an interruption. It was really a divine appointment. A word that God had for some of us in that season. Then we went to the third part of this. And I, I asked some of us because there's a great concern. I asked us, who do we think the enemy is? And I taught you biblically that there is an enemy. The Barna Group says that 62% of evangelical Christians do not believe in a devil. But yet 97% believe in angels. This is biblical ignorance at its finest. And so I shared with you that there, 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 there must come a time in our life in spiritual warfare where we acknowledge that the battle is not, Obama is not the devil. I said that. Trump is not the devil. Your wife is not the devil just because she speaks her mind because you're not in line. Oops. Your kids are not the devil. My friend, the devil uses people. We get that. We understand that. We'll touch on that a little bit more today. But the, the fact is he is the one that roars around, comes around like a roaring lion seeking who he may devour. Amen? I, I showed you through the scripture something very clear that was up on this clip. It says, stay alert. Watch out for your great enemy, the devil. Right? Yeah. That's the fact. You have an enemy. And it is the devil. And it's definitely a spiritual attack. And this led into last week because I think that after you clearly see who, clearly see who your enemy is, you need to know his weapons. Just like we learn to use our weapons, the sword of the spirit, the word of the living God, we learn to, 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 to take that shield of faith. Just as you learn to use your weapons, you need to know your enemy and then know his weapons. So last week, we went into this understanding, trying biblically to teach you that there are three captions that almost everything falls under when it comes to the enemy's weapons against you. God showed me that deception, temptation, and accusation are the captions that usually everything falls under. He has many weapons, don't get it twisted, but most of what the devil does is he comes with deception it leads to temptation and then accusations ruin the church today ruin the person that you want to be today the devil will come in and he will dangle the worm in front of you and most of us don't see the hook behind the worm because we're so tempted by the worm and then he snags us and then he comes at you and says see I told you you weren't good enough I told you God's not real I told you he's holding back from you just like he did Eve he deceived her then tempted her and then made her made accusations against her and that's what he does in all of our lives this is spiritual warfare at its finest. You need to know his weapons, amen? amen? And so I taught that last week because it's so imperative that we know when we're dealing with spiritual warfare, it's real, church. It's real, people. If you don't believe me, just look back on your week and see if you weren't attacked mentally, emotionally, and spiritually this week. I know you were because you're a believer. And if there was nothing bad going on, celebrate that. But if there was an attack, celebrate that because it means that you're doing something for the kingdom. See, faith is uncomfortable, and when you're living faith, you have an adversary that comes against you. And the problem is most that don't live their faith are living in happy la-la land because they're not stretching it. They're not moving. They're not breaking out because of the breakthrough that God delivers them from or into. Amen? Oh, man, I'm going to preach today. You're going to get with me or you're not, but I'm going to show you some clarity through the Word of God, the last part of this whole thing, because if you don't understand this, then all of spiritual warfare is completely nonsense and you're not taking in the full impact of what this message was meant for you to, to take in. So I hope you hear me clearly, and I love you. I've got to tell you the truth, because I love you, and this Word is clear who the enemy is and what his major asset in war is, and I hope you hear it with your spiritual eyes and your heart today, amen? I wrote this, now knowing who your enemy is, plus knowing his weapons, plus knowing God and his weapons, equals knowledge. Yeah. 
The devil wants you to stay ignorant. I love ignorance. Y'all gonna get, I love ignorance because it's teachable. Stupidity is knowing better and doing it anyway. Uh, uh, stupidity, there are no stupid people and we've said this over and over in the last few weeks because I want you to remember, people are good. They just make stupid choices. See, ignorance is knowing the truth and, and doing the opposite anyway, doing what's not right anyway. And, and so people are stupid choices. They're making stupid choices. But, but ignorance is teachable, so I embrace people who are ignorant. I like ignorance when they say something that is not an educated statement. I love to be able to debate that with them because debates are great because you are willing to hear both sides. But arguments, waste of time. Yeah. Amen? And I'll show you that through the Word of God, how important it is. Wow, Pastor Brenda, good job. Knowing your enemy, knowing his weapons, and knowing God and his weapons equals knowledge. And that will birth the ability to exercise wisdom in spiritual warfare. Amen? First Peter says, stay alert, watch out for your great enemy, the devil. He prowls around like a roaring lion seeking who he may devour. So what is his greatest asset in war which is used to devour us if he's devouring the people of God? The answer to that is today's message and that strongholds. Look at your neighbor and say, we're going to break strongholds today. We forgot, the, we forgot the sword. I had a sword that I was going to bring out today that I was going to show you. Man, uh, come here, Tyler. I'm going to try something real quick. Okay. Come here, Sam. I need you. Tim, you're our muscle man bodyguard. Come on up here. Look at this beef coming up. Booyah! I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's okay. We have a friendship. I can say that. All right. Strongholds are not meant to let go. Look at little Sam in between these guys. So what's coming next? I want you guys to grab him together in a grip that he cannot get out of. <laughs> Tyler and Tim, get him. Hold him tight. I don't want him to go. Try to get out. <laughs> okay. This is a very strong hold. Amen. Go ahead. Thank you. Give my hand. Praise God. <laughs> A stronghold will choke the life out of you. <laughs> Poor Sam, I'm sorry, but that was probably good for your back. Maybe not, I don't know. <laughs> Strongholds are not meant to let you go. They are meant to literally suffocate you to death. They are meant to take the life that God has given you, the will that he has placed in you, the spark that he has, he began to fan into flames in you and put it out and extinguish it for whatever it is that you would like to do that feels good anyway or better than God's will. The strongholds in life that the enemy tries to implement us against us are his assets in war. And today I want you to clearly know this. I want to make this so clear that when you leave here, you'll say two things. I will never believe a liar again and I will never be a liar again because it's not worth it. And you'll see what I mean here in a minute. Amen? This is the end and the conclusion, but it's not the end. I can't wait. I left Sunday morning of next week open for whatever God would have us do. Some of you who are in spiritual warfare might come and end up on your knees before the presence of God next week. I really believe we're going to release these altars and people are going to start to find God again. Y'all, I'm getting ready for the best of the best. We didn't preach this so that you could sit on it. We preached this so we could exercise it. Amen? So we can make a practical application of praying for each other and anointing each other with oil and believing God is God. Yeah. Mm. Yes. If we're going to be Pentecostal, we might as well do it. Uh -huh. Sorry. <laughs> <Come on. sighs> might as well do it. Spiritual Warfare Part 5, Strongholds. Why am I ending the series on this? This is the single most powerful weapon that destroys both relationships and intimacy with God. Look at your neighbor and say lies. Lies, lies can come and what strongholds are are lies believed as truth. Lies can come in the form of deception like I talked about last week and accusations. Accusations always lead to guilt and the feeling of unworthiness which, which weighs you down and tears you apart spiritually. When you begin to feel unworthy, spiritually you begin to become exhausted. You feel like you're not good enough. That's how the enemy opens up the extinguisher and begins to put out the fire that God is trying to birth in your life. He gets you excited, the Father does, about being in His presence, about being used by Him. And the devil comes in with lies believed as truth and he begins to unleash his extinguisher so that you will go home and have the joy sucked out of you by joy suckers who do not believe in the King of Glory. I'm just going to preach it, praise God. So today we're going to learn how to win this battle. A battle against shame and guilt caused by liars and being a liar. 
A stronghold is a deception that has taken hold in a person's mind. Everybody point to your head. Between these ears is the greatest battlefield. If you want to read a book, look at Joyce Meyer's Battlefield of the Mind. Take it in. Soak on it. Eat it. Chew it. It's a great word for the delivery of the mental uh, craziness that's trying to infiltrate your brain. The Word of God is the best healer of all these battles if we'll take it in. If we'll eat it. But I'm telling you, it's a good model to follow because she gives you biblical truths. Amen? I wrote this, strongholds are an incorrect thinking pattern based on a believed lie. So what is a lie? A lie is a statement that is known or intended by its source, by the person delivering the lie, by the person speaking the lie, to be misleading, inaccurate, or false. So right now, I could look at my daughter-in-law, who did the announcements today, whom I love, and I could say, you're a dude. <laughs> but that wouldn't work right. I'm not even going to touch that. Because you all know... She's giving me three beautiful grandbabies. She's not a dude. Listen to this. A lie is a statement that is known or intended by its source, by the person giving it to be misleading, inaccurate, or false. So lies may be employed to serve that person in a, vi a variety of instrumental, interpersonal, and psychological functions. What am I trying to say here? It's pretty simple. Broken people use lies to further their selfish agendas. So Satan uses them as willing participants. A lie believed the truth is a stronghold and the devil will use people to speak lies. Not only that, he speaks them directly to you. Have you ever heard the whisper? Remember what you did back in the day? See, to that I remind him that even if my God has forgotten it, I have no right to bring it back up. Amen? Yep. Amen? I tell him all the time and I've told you before, he whom the sun sets free is free indeed. Come at me, bro. Broken people use lies to further their, further their selfish agendas because they don't know Jesus, not because they're bad people, but because they're willing participants of the enemy with the enemy to be used by the enemy in their brokenness. You've got to understand this, church. I'm going to help you learn it today. Why do people lie and allow Satan to use them? We ask people all the time, why did they have to lie? It's really simple. Jesus says it best in John 8, 44. He says, for you are the children of your father, the devil. Whoa, what did I say? He was talking to a group of people who were not living in the truth. They were living in religion and they weren't tapping into the relationship side of this thing. And so they were using manipulation and accusation and deception to do what they had to do. And Jesus addresses it all. And he says, listen, for you are the children of your father, the devil. And he goes on to say, and you love to do the evil things that he does. See, he was a murderer from the beginning. He was, hmm, y'all don't get that statement. He had hate in his heart. Hate in your heart is the same as murder in the New Testament. Amen? Tell me again how you can love God and hate people. It doesn't work that way. But he goes on to say, he, was, he, he has always had hatred and hated the truth because there is no truth in him. He said, when he lies... It is consistent with his character. Why do people lie? Because they're following this person, the father of lies. He says, for he is a liar and the father of lies. So Jesus is simply saying, why do people lie? They're following the character of their father, the father of all lies, and that's Satan. And it's not, again, I want to tell you guys, you cannot take personally the attack of a liar. You have to understand that behind that is a broken person. Behind that is a manipulated person. You got to love them into the kingdom, not condemn them to hell. They are liars because they don't know what else to do. They're following the character of the one that they followed all this time. They've been used by an enemy who is very real. And you say, well, where do you get this? I'm gonna, this is not on the slide. This is extra. This is how I get this. In first Tim, or Second Timothy, it says this. It, it says, perhaps God will change them for they have been held captive by him, Satan, to do whatever he wants. Liars come because they are used by the devil to do whatever he wants. Because they're captive. Their mind is not free to live freedom. And so, so I want to show you this today, amen? Jesus said it his best. He said they're following their father. Why do people lie and allow Satan to use them? Because they are under demonic control and bondage. They've been deceived. So they become deceivers. People can get incorrect perceptions of God by listening to Satan. Last week I shared with you how Eve, the Eve that, that sat in the garden, began to understand something that wasn't something she could comprehend by, because she failed. She didn't know what... what what death was and he said surely you will not die she was deceived to take the bait she was deceived to think that God was holding back when in fact he gave everything to her yeah. everything she could have wanted and she even made the statement but he did give us all of this but he said yeah but there's that one thing she made he made Satan made her believe that he was holding back Deception happens so quick sometimes so quickly that we we, we, we fall away and I just want you to know there is a rebound you can come back when you've been deceived. God gives us so much grace. 
I don't want to beat anybody up with this. I want you to hear this. God will deliver people from being liars. And he will deliver us from being people who accept that by, a, by an area of true uh, discernment that we can grow in. Wisdom and knowledge. Amen? Uh, we won't go there. That's not, this is where I'm at. People get incorrect perceptions of God by listening to Satan, the father of lies, as he tells them how God doesn't love them. He can't possibly love you. Don't you know what you've done? He's holding back from you. The devil tells people that God's withholding something from you. I hate that statement because in all reality, he gave it all for us. Everything he had, he came, he died, he rose again. He, he sacrificed his son. He gave it all, yet the enemy will still tell you that God tells you the nose of the Bible to hold back when in fact all the no's in the Bible are to keep you in freedom, amen? amen. Take that, devil. God is not trying to control you, that is not love. He's trying to keep you free. He's trying to make sure that you walk in freedom afforded you by the cross, by the blood of the Lamb. He gave it all, amen? Oh, man. People can feel like dirty old sinners when they believe Satan's accusations. As he continually reminds them of their past. So they join into the rebellion and they begin to lie because they believe the lie. Strongholds are based on lies from the devil. Believe lies. So 1 John tells us in chapter 2 verse 22. So who is a liar? Watch this. Anyone who says that Jesus is not the Christ. Anyone who denies the Father and the Son is an antichrist. We read this and we often think this, mean, think this just simply means with a verbal thought. I don't believe in God. No, no, no. Christians who have given their life to Jesus still deny Jesus by not living the life. We are an antichrist when we don't obey the word of God. Oh, that's deep. When we can't love people, yet we've accepted Jesus' love, we've taken salvation and, and, and we've decided to exclude the Lord. But he is both Lord and Savior. And so a liar becomes somebody who's accepted the truth, but yet does not show it by their lifestyle. We have to never deny Jesus. When we've accepted him, we accept him by living it. And, and if you don't think I'm right, let's keep on going. First John 4 says, if someone says, I love God, but hates his fellow believer, that person is a liar. No, it doesn't matter if you say you believe God. If you hate people in your heart, the Bible says you're a liar. And we've got to get that out of our picture, out of the way, because you become the very one the devil uses. This is warfare. And this isn't a popular truth, but it's a truth. I want you to know there's nothing better than the beauty and the splendor of honesty. I mean, it breaks boundaries. It tears down walls. It rips apart every stronghold the enemy has in your life. There's nothing secret anyway. My most intimate failures I've shared with my wife, and they've brought the greatest freedom in my life because of accountability. Anybody get that? Yeah, God's that good. It says if somebody says, I love God, but I hate my fellow believer, that person is a liar. For if we don't love people that we can see, this is the word of God, how can we love God whom we cannot see? So lies create strongholds in lives. Lies that come from Satan are what he uses, church against people and guess what then he uses people what do you mean Job says it best in Job chapter 36 1 he says I'm innocent but they call me a liar <laughs> we were sitting at we were, we were sitting at our church picnic yesterday and I found out that if you google our, our vineyard of hope thing that one guy had a poor statement said uh, um, what did he say a fake he says I'm a fake and I lied from the pulpit and, and when he said this, I laughed a little bit because these are just lies, right? And I know who I am, so it doesn't offend me. I don't, get, I don't get affected by it, nor do I defend it. But here's the funny part of this. He is saying, he is being used by the enemy to say things. And just like in this, it's an attempt of the enemy to, to get to me and to ruin my stand and my, 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 my forward momentum for the kingdom. So Job said it best. He says, I'm innocent, but they call me a liar. And so he says, my suffering is incurable. Now I'm going to show you something. Though I have not sinned, he says, my suffering is incurable, though I have not sinned. So Job faced strongholds, a, 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 an anxiety and a, a craziness in his life that he almost felt like it was, it was uncontrollable. That's a stronghold. The lie believed his truth. He thought that it was unbearable and this suffering became him because he was believing that these people had any power over his life because they were lying about him being a liar. Get it? 
And so that stronghold came from people, and these are what happened. God, or Satan will use people, and people will begin to help the enemy build strongholds in your life. This is where Job said, listen, they, they're calling me a liar, so my suffering is incurable. But in fact, we've got to understand that it is not because we are in Christ Jesus. Don't let a liar create suffering in your life. Psalms 122 says, rescue me, O Lord. The psalmist put it like this, for liars, from liars and from all deceitful people. Why? Because liars lead to deceit, and deceit is a stronghold. So we have another stronghold created by lies and liars. I'm trying to teach you that the enemy's greatest asset is strongholds, and strongholds are created by lies, and lies come from both Satan and people. And this is the truth. The Bible shows us many times how this is a steady progression. We go into another one, Proverbs 6, 12. It says, what are worthless and wicked people like? They are constant liars. Why? Because the enemy has infiltrated their life and taken over what they could have been. They are no longer because they're operating in wickedness, stronghold, right? And worthlessness, another stronghold. There are a lot of people that are worthless. Not because they're bad people, but because they have believed lies and the enemy has implemented a stronghold that they live under. That's why I hate that statement. Uh, been there, done that, got the t-shirt. I keep telling people, then burn it. You don't want to be labeled that. Burn the t-shirt. Quit living the past. Let that stronghold fall by the wayside. Proverbs 10 says this, hiding hatred makes you a liar. Hiding how you feel makes you a liar. Get a, it creates a stronghold. I do not like people coming to me in church and going, oh, I'm highly blessed and fully favored when they walked in with hate in their heart and just had a fight with their wife. You're not being honest. Quit being uber spiritual and be you, but finish it with the word of God. I told you last week, one of the enemy's ways of making you a liar is you fake being some kind of spiritual person that you're not. Be you, but finish it with the word of God, which is life. How do we speak life? We tell the truth and then we end it with the word of God. How are you feeling? Last week I said, I'm passing a kidney stone and it hurts, but thank God. And then Tuesday night I had a baby. <laughs> Y'all, come on with me. We end it with the word. Yeah. The enemy does send things like health issues and to be distractions, but we have each other. We have God. I'm going to get ahead of myself. Huh. We have different things that we can do. Use against the enemy when he's trying to create a lie, believe this truth over your life or a stronghold. Amen? Proverbs 17, 14 says, wrongdoers, watch this, eagerly listen to gossip. Yeah. Eagerly listen. Liars pay close attention to slander. The only people who like to hear all that nonsense are people who are being controlled by the enemy themselves. Otherwise, you would look at them and say, no, nope, not happening on my watch. You, you guys got to know that your mind is nobody's playground. And the devil does like to come and use people to get into your mind to talk about people in your life. But I have a goal and a, and a method of dealing with this that, that, that I'm trying to make even better in my life. When somebody comes and they begin to say something, I automatically go, wait, 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 why are you talking about that? Wait, wait why, is that, why are they in this? Why are they in this message or this conversation? Can we get them involved? Nope. You ever try that? Nope. You'd be amazed at how many people say, oh, never mind, I don't want to talk about this now because their motives are not right. Now again, I'm not trying to dog people. What I'm trying to get you to understand is people who listen to liars and then become liars are broken people. Believing deception is better than honesty and integrity. But Jesus says, hey, be like me. Love the broken. Feed the, feed the hungry. Clothe the naked. Do something that is better than anything that you could do in your own will and I'll make better things happen in your life. I'll help you live in true freedom. Why does he say not to get into, it says, but above all things put off anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication from the mouth. Why is he saying all that? Because none of that looks like Jesus and all of that creates strongholds that are meant to ruin you and your testimony. Do you believe somebody's a Christian when they stand up and they cuss out their neighbor or flip somebody off? I cannot stand somebody driving down the street with a Jesus sticker and a glory uh, bumper sticker, a Jesus fish thing, flipping somebody off. It just <laughs> drives me absolutely insane. Anybody else? I'm not saying we're supposed to be perfect, but we have to make headway. And if we're going to re represent him, let's do it without all the things. God wants you to live in freedom so people can find freedom. You are Jesus in skin and people need to see it. Amen? They need it again in the church. And we are a bunch of hypocrites. People say, but I don't go to church because they're hypocrites. And I always say, yeah, but we could always use one more. Come on, join us. Because we're all a work in progress, pray God. Amen? 
Get that through your minds. You don't have to be perfect, but we have to have progress because that's what Christ is about. I tell people, come as you are. But remember, Jesus loves you so much that he doesn't want you to stay the way you are. He wants you to grow, not saying that you're bad or horrible, but when you come, it's usually with broken pieces that he has to put back together. I get tired of a church that does like to tell people, come as you are, but when they walk in just like they are, then we begin to critique how they are. Quit telling them, come as they are if you don't like it. If you're going to say, come as you are, let them come as they are. Love them into it, amen? Are we getting anywhere today? God is so good. That wasn't on my notes. That's extra. I love you guys, and God is doing a great thing. Spiritual warfare is resisting. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm resisting. Wake them up if they're sleeping. Poke them really hard. Say, I'm resisting the enemy today. Spiritual warfare is resisting, overcoming, and defeating the enemy's lies that he sends our way. James 4, 7 says, submit yourselves there unto God. Submit and resist the devil, your enemy, your adversary, the one that is coming against you. Resist him and he will flee from you. The problem with most is they don't resist long enough for him to get away. They begin to resist a little bit and then when he walks four steps away, they go, well, maybe it would be okay this time around. Listen, you've got to let him run because you're so steadfast in being for what you need to be for Jesus Christ. Resist long enough and watch them run. <laughs> Resist the lies. Resist believing the lies and he'll get away from you. When he can begin to believe that you won't believe his lies, I'm telling you, he will leave and come back another time. Jesus, after the enemy tried to tempt him in the wilderness, used the word of God to shut him up. And it says the angels came and they attended to him, but they, they rested until another time. The devil ran and left him alone until another time. The enemy will always come back around, but when you've grown and you've resisted long enough, I'm telling you, you begin to learn his tactics in warfare and you recognize him. The Holy Spirit gives you discernment to understand that this too is an attack by another liar. This too is an attack in my own spirit to not be a liar. We have these fights in our mind that think that I'm telling you, everybody has the same fight. Should I be completely honest? Listen, there are no half truths in the kingdom of God. I'm sorry, you cannot just withhold, withhold something that is truth and speak only half the truth with the intention of deceiving somebody because it's still a lie. But I only told them half, I wasn't really lying. Were you intending to deceive them by not giving the full truth? Then it's a lie. <laughs> this is the enemy's tactics. I'm teaching you. Amen? Deliverance from strongholds involves the breaking up of legal grounds, church. The deliverance from wrong teaching and the casting out of demonic control and bondage. Demonic control and bondage, which still happens. Since strongholds are built upon lies that we've been fed, the way we tear down these strongholds is by feeding ourselves the truth, the real living word of God, which is the opposite of what the enemy has been feeding you. He's been feeding you lies, but if you take in the word of God, you are feeding yourself with the ammunition to take out the enemy. If the enemy has been feeding us a lie, we need to stop eating the lie and start eating the bread of truth and of life. Jesus Christ, the word of God, the weapon that we use to tear down the strongholds is found in Ephesians. I've shared this in this whole series and that is the sword of the spirit which is, which is power. It is the word of God, amen? And it's double-edged and it cuts even to the very marrow through the bone. It is something that cannot be, cannot be manufactured, cannot be taken lightly and will never ever have a negative effect on your life because it's the word of God and he didn't come to bring you down. He came to take you up. You got to take it in so you have something to fight the enemy with. Amen? When strongholds come your way, you have the living truth in you. And so when the enemy speaks a lie or somebody's speaking a lie, you take the truth and you just put it out there and let God be God. Amen? Liars can't fight truth. You know, if you're living in truth and somebody calls you something that you're not, your experience in truth will far outweigh their accusations of lies. Why? They can say it, but you know who you are. So they're not going to affect you. When you know whose you are, they don't intimidate you because you, you're living in truth. Isn't that cool? Like it's like back in the day when I was a drug addict, man, driving down the street, I used to like keep looking for the popo. Y'all, come on. I would drive down the street and I was so out of it and, and I had things issues and I go down the street man and every time I saw a cop man my butt cheeks would get tight and I'd just uh, he's coming to get me 
And I knew it was paranoia. They weren't really coming to get me, but you all know what we get like, right? And so this is the truth. Because I was living in lie, living in sin, out of the will of God, everything that could happen in that moment caused me to fear, caused me to get anxious and, and crazy. I, I would start panicking because I knew that I wasn't living in the truth. And, and if the guy pulled me over, I was going to jail. But watch this. Now when I go down, the cops are waving at me. The police chief has coffee with me on my porch. The cops come by and they say, hi, Pastor Gin. How can we help you today? It's a far cry different to live in the truth than it is in a lie. Amen. Come on. Yeah. Strongholds are lie, believe the truth. And then when you live in the truth, that no stronghold can come in and captivate your mind and ruin what God's doing because you know that you know that you know that you are standing with the way, the truth, and life. His name is Jesus Christ. And in him, there is no accusation that can bring you down. Yeah. Strongholds are the devil's assets in war. And he uses them against us. So I'm challenging this body. Don't do it like you've ever done it before. Take up the sword of the spirit. Take up the word of God like you never have before. Get up at three in the morning. Sit there with your Bible open and quit reading it. Study it, eat it, chew on it. Pray to God, bring this alive. If you want me to be more like you, show me and I'm telling you, he will blow your mind. Because he loves you enough to speak to you that way. Take up the sword of the spirit, God's word today, and start slaughtering the enemy's assets, the strongholds that have already been planted in your mind. You can ruin them with the sword of the spirit. The word of God comes and it says that he renews and refreshes and restores your mind through the washing of the word. The washing of the word will destroy every stronghold that's ever been put in your mind. Every hurt, every habit, every hang up, everything that anybody's ever said about you, everything that you've ever looked in the mirror and said about yourself can be healed in Jesus' name. You are worthy, you are good enough, and God has greatness in this room alone if you just believe that you can. Some of you still haven't grabbed that. You're still lying to yourself and thinking that you're no good, that you're not worthy, but I'm telling you, when I see Osawatomi and I see Vineyard of hope and I see the people that are in here I believe God can use you yeah. you just got to get out of the way and let him you got to stop fighting because yeah, any fight with God is a losing fight church no. you can fight a lot of things but you cannot fight God and win you cannot fight God and win and when you quit believing even your own lies God is going to blow your mind with the capacity that you have to be a life changer yeah. in here Awaken, oh sleeper. Oh, yes. One of my favorite. Awaken! Yeah. <laughs> so what do we do? What do we do to keep strongholds from occurring in our mind? I don't want to just talk to you about it. I'm going to give you some things that you can do. Is that okay? Yes. I'm not preaching too long, am I? Good. The first thing, why don't we fear God once again? You want to see how strongholds are removed and, and broken and, and dismantled in your life? Begin to fear God again because He is a God who will keep His word. And He does not tolerate liars, church. You should know this while dealing with a liar or being one. You should understand that there's going to come a day where you need to fear God and His word. Because what He says here is really simple. A false witness will not go unpunished, nor will liars escape. So when the enemy's coming at me and liars are trying to beat me down, here's what I do. I say, oh my goodness, Lord, touch them and bless them. Because they do not know that one day you're going to keep your word. One day you're going to do what you said you're going to do. And that doesn't look good for a liar. That doesn't look good for somebody who's denying Christ with their very lifestyle. That's not loving their brother, but yet claiming to love God. Well, you thought I was just talking about unsaved people. I'm talking to my brothers and sisters in here. It's not going to look good. But you can begin to have a reverent fear of God again. Because he is going to keep his word. Because he's God. See, he's not a man that he could lie, the word of God says. That's in the Bible. That's in this book. <laughs> this awesome living word. And I eat that every time I turn around and I try to get into that stronghold again. I try to begin to think that any kind of deception is going to work. It never does. It always backfires. Amen? Second thing that you can do to keep it from happening is don't hang out with liars. If you don't want strongholds in your life, get away from the liars in life. They may be the mission field, but not everybody who is your mission to reach with the gospel is somebody you hang out with. Do you hear me? The longer you hang out with the people, the more they, they become like you or you like them, depending on who is truly grounded. 
And let me read this. The Word of God simply puts it like this, not Ken Tyson. Well, that's awful mean. Aren't you judging? No, I'm telling you, you cannot hang out with them because a little yeast goes a long way. It says in Psalms 26, 4, I do not spend times with liars. How do you not allow the strongholds or lies believed as truth to come and implement your mind? Do not spend time. I do not spend time with liars or go along with hypocrites. These kinds of people are slow infiltrators of your mind. Slowly they creep in with their deception. And the Bible says stay away from them. Third thing is when Satan tries to tell you that God is not who he is, remember, God is faithful even when the world isn't. How do I get that? Romans chapter 3. He's talking to another group of people and he says, true, some of them were unfaithful. But just because they were unfaithful, does that mean that God will be unfaithful? Everybody look at your neighbor and say, of course not. The word of God says here, of course not. Everyone else, even if everyone else is a liar, God is true. Well, I remember that when a stronghold comes and it tries to convince me that my God is not good, that he doesn't love me and that I can't be better than I am right now in my dysfunction, I remind him, no, 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 my God says something different. This is his word and that's my reality. That's how I keep strongholds from happening. Amen? And fourth, this is my final one and this is my biggest one. For every one of you in this place, I need you to understand the truth in this. First, fear God once again because if there's no fear of God, you will always rationalize compromise. Second, don't hang out with people that you're supposed to be being the example to. Be an example and then get away and wait for another day because God will always bring the opportunity. Amen? Third, when Satan tries to tell you that, that, that God's lying and he's holding something back, remind him that God gave it all, that you can do it. This keeps strongholds. And then last, final, remember that God's great tool, a tool against strongholds, is teamwork. Doing it together is how we destroy any chance of being deceived. I'm going to show you this. Because God never takes a gossip and makes a gossip into somebody better. He takes somebody who's walking the life of freedom to create freedom in the gossip. Did we get that? He will ruin that kind of stuff because you are above it. You are growing through it. You are the testimony that if God can do it in me, he can do it in you. Amen? And so we've got to understand that we together in our freedom can make a difference in each other's lives. You will not be relinquished from the control of strongholds unless you vow to do it as a body united with nothing else in the way. They came united and he poured out his Holy Spirit. They were in one accord and that came a mighty rushing wind and it flooded the upper room and the Holy Spirit rested on them with that of clothes of fire because why? They were united. We need each other in warfare. Yeah. I need you and you need me and we together can do it. So the last thing, remember, if you want to keep strongholds from happening, remember 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3 through 6. I have opened this sermon with this every week that I've done this series, except for today. But I'm going to repeat myself. We are humans. Everybody say we. We, we need each other. We are humans, but we. Say we. we. Come on. <laughs> we are humans, but we don't wage war as humans do. We use God's mighty weapons, not worldly weapons, to knock down the strongholds, the lies believed as truth, to demolish them of human reasoning that happens where? In our mind. And we destroy, we completely dismantle, we demolish, we destroy false arguments which are lies that happen where? But watch this, it goes on. We destroy. Look at it, look at it. We are, we're going to do it. We are going to do it. Yeah. You're not because your best intentions alone get you in the greatest trouble. But we can do it. If you want to keep strongholds from happening, remember it's a we thing, not a me thing. It's us together. We destroy proud obstacles that keep us from knowing God, not being religious, but from walking intimately with the king. And it goes on to say, we capture the rebellious thoughts and teach them to obey Christ. We, 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 we. All the way home. All the way home. You can't do it alone, but we can do it together. Yeah. We need each other. Yeah. What does that mean? That means when things are being said and lies come your way, and even the enemy is working on your own mind, go to a brother and sister and be encouraged. Go to the right ones. How do you know the right ones? Well, give it a shot. You'll find out sooner or later which are the right and which are the wrong. Yeah. Give it a shot, though. What do we have to lose in finding unity in this house really prevail? and growing strong together. The trick is this, I go to people that I need help from with a willing heart to do something about my issue, not just to whine. God wants you to come to pour out your heart then be willing to do the work as he captivates it. As he falls in love with you and you and him, he begins to maneuver you into the position together. And where unity happens, revival takes off. Revival happens, amen? We need each other. Isolation and separation are the enemy's tools in warfare. If he can get you by yourself, 
He will beat your mind up. If he can get you to stay home from church instead of being in church, if he can get you not to act like a church and act like the world, he will begin to mess with you in isolation, separate you from those who want to love you, and you will definitely fall on your face and go, wow, that was quick. It's really a slow fade, though. It happens with just a couple times, and then it ends up being months later, and you're going, why did that happen? It's because you forgot that you need people and people need you. God did not create you to be independent. He created us to be interdependent, first on him, then with each other. Amen? If you can love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength, you can then love your neighbors as your as yourself. A lot of people can't love others because they don't know how to forgive themselves. Come on, church. We've got to love what God's created. I look in the mirror now where I used to hate it. Now I look and I go, you might not be as pretty as you want to be, but you're honest. You're transparent. You're spoken for. I'm spoken for. Second Timothy says this, run from anything that stimulates youthful lusts. Instead, pursue righteous living, faithfulness, love, and peace. Watch this. And enjoy the companionship of those who call on the Lord with pure hearts. With pure hearts. Enjoy the companionship of those who call on the with pure hearts. Does that mean perfect people? No. That means people who love Jesus and are trying to get passionate. Passionate people. Pure hearts. Again, I say, and I've used this one all week, trying, trying not to defend myself, I'm telling you. I've used this one all week when it comes to people trying to talk about black lives matter, white lives matter, white pride, Asian pride, black pride, gay pride. I've used this one over and over. Do not get involved in foolish, ignorant arguments that only cause quarrels and debates. See, in those statements, white pride, black pride, gay pride, it's not a skin issue. We all know that pride is the sin and that is the issue. has nothing to do, and we need to say it from the pulpit for everybody to hear. I am not a racist. I love my interracial marriage, but I know that it exists. We face it all the time. But here's the fact. It's not because they're bad people. It's because they're sinful people. And sin's the problem, Amen. And we can hit it head on if we're love in action. If we just come together and show a united front like the world's never seen, like Osawatomi's never taken in. They've seen people tear each other up and call that church. If we didn't do that, then they would say, hey, what's going on there? I want to be with them. I want to know what they got and I want what they got. And just maybe we'll lead them to Jesus Christ. I don't know. Call me crazy, but I believe in that. He says, a servant of the Lord must not quarrel and be kind to everyone, must be... Able to teach, be patient with difficult people? <laughs> I'm a difficult person, so I get it. This is the hard part. Gently instruct those who oppose the truth. Or liars. Liars. Gently oppose them. And it says, perhaps God, because he's the Holy Spirit. Everybody remember that? It says, perhaps God will change those people's hearts and they will learn the truth. Why? Because they have been, because they will then come to their senses and escape the devil's trap. Strongholds create a trap. Watch this. For they have been captive by him to do whatever he said, like I said earlier. So this is what we need to do. Submit yourselves therefore unto God. Resist the devil and he will flee. Matter of fact, Psalms 19 says it best when it says, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Guys, strongholds can be removed when the word of God becomes more important and his love and our love for him becomes more important than what the world ever has to offer. Then no stronghold can beat you down. I believe he loves you. I know he loves you. I know he wants the best for you. I know he wants you to have your heart's desires because he loves you that much and no lie could ever take that from you if you would begin to feed and meditate on the word of God and make that your reality. Yeah. Come on, quit believing the strongholds and the lies of the devil. Let go and let him have your heart. Get to know what he has to say about you. He's pretty cool. As a matter of fact, he really has a lot of good to say about you. It's not always do not, thou shalt not. No, no, he's called you overcomers, more than overcomers. Called you special. You were created for a reason. He had, there's so much. Marvelously and wonderfully made. Oh, well, what? He says that? Yeah. It's a love letter, but some of us don't get that ammunition. And I want you to get that so you break all strongholds. Remember, people that lie are used by the enemy. That means there's a demonic stronghold that is captivating them to the place of dysfunction where they would actually entertain being like the enemy. And so you've got to pray for the for, for, for God 
to do the delivering of their lives, to deliver them. Be an example that they can follow. Don't beat them down. You will never beat somebody with a Bible and see them saved. I'm sorry, it won't work. But you can be a light just by being the example. Jesus wants to demolish every stronghold in your life, but you've got to let him. He will not force your hand into giving up your dysfunction. He will not make you obedient to the word of God. You've got to choose to do so. You've got to make a choice in Jesus' name. This is spiritual warfare at its finest. I want you to win this war. Would you stand with me? Was I a little bit long today? We had a few extra things. Yes, I was. But I, I, I would rather have you here, hearing the truth, than running home for a pizza. Amen? Come on. I want you to win this war. I don't think we're done, Pastor Brandon. I think we've got another week of this. I think we got another week in this series. we got one more week, I guess. Have you heard a word today? Yes. I pray that you remember liars, or if you are a liar, all that, all that can change because he's given you a, a, just an abundant amount of mercy that are made new every day and grace that is never failing, never ending. But grace isn't to compromise. Grace should lead you to change. That gospel that says, oh, it's because of his grace. We can do what we want is a lie. If you understand grace, you never want to do what would break his heart. Yeah. Amen? Amen? So I, I challenge you to get into your word this week. God, we're, gonna, we're not ready. I challenge you to get into your word and begin to wash this mind and win some of the battles today. Is that okay? Can I challenge you to do that? If you haven't picked up your Bible in a long time, today is the day. This week is the week. Get alone with God so he can be intimate with you and watch what happens. Amen? Yeah. Intimate is not a dirty word. It's just a word of passion. It's a declaration of, of just complete unity with you that God has and makes. He says he wants to be intimate with you. It doesn't mean he wants to be nasty with you. Come on, he wants to be in love with you. He wants to touch you. He wants to make your heart so overwhelmed with what he can be and what you can be that nothing in this world will ever, ever take that place. Amen? So I pray that you go in love and that you, that you grow in love, church. The strongholds are removed because you dared to get out of your comfort zone and actually do this with me. I'm challenging you to read your Bible so we can celebrate next week. Can I do that? Yeah. Study your Bible in Jesus' name. Show that you are a believer. Let God have it so that you can live it. Amen? Amen. Do you believe in who you are? I hope you are. Look at your neighbor and say, this, year, this week I'm an overcomer. Come on. This week, you, are no, you just said it with your mouth. Now you spoke life, and I pray that it becomes the truth. <laughs> Don't be a liar. <laughs> Do it this week, amen? amen? Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for this word. And I humbly come and I say, God, we are just not worthy. We are not, but you don't count us as worthy or unworthy. You just, you just count us as yours. So we thank you for this word. We thank you that in this spiritual battle that we're going through, in this fight that we are going through in Osawatomi, in the body of Christ, all around, Lord, that, that we have an intimate connection with you that will carry us through. That we have you and your word is always true and you will carry us that we are more than overcomers, that we are free because you indeed have set us free, Lord. And so we walk in that. And this week, I pray your grace and your mercy would just overcome people as they passionately pursue you. I pray that courage would become us, that we would mount up, God, with wings and we would begin to soar in a way that you called us to soar as a lighthouse for people to see truth and freedom and grace and mercy. God, help us to forgive when we need to forgive, to love when we need to. I pray that hate would be removed and all bitterness, bitterness destroyed in Jesus' name this week. Touch your people. Push us forward because, God, we want to see you move in Osawatomi. We want to see you completely pour out your glory in Miami County in Kansas. We want to see you move, God. So get us out of the way this week so that we can witness a move of God when we come together. When we're alone. Just whenever you want, Father. We pray this and we believe this. I believe, I believe right now I speak it in Jesus' name. I speak breakthrough over every life. Sudden, dramatic, important development, discovery take place over every life that is here as they go out this week. Bless them, bless them, bless them. Encourage them. God, open our eyes, remove the scales, and deliver us this week into your will for our life. We pray and we believe it together until we meet again tonight. In Jesus' mighty name, and everybody said, Amen. 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 Tell somebody you love them on the way out. We love you.